So, welcome to our new topic, uh, Understanding Atomic and Nuclear Physics. Today's lesson will look at the history of the atomic models, in particular the plum pudding model, and also the gold leaf experiment by Ernest Rutherford. So, in the 5th century BC, the Greek philosophers Leucippus and his pupil Demodocus proposed that all matter was composed of something which was small and indivisible. And they, they called these, these particles atoms, from the Greek for atomos, indivisible. Between 1800 and 1810, the British scientist Dalton discovered five things, or postulated five things, about the atom. He proposed that chemical elements are made of atoms, the atoms of an element are identical in their masses. Atoms of different elements have different masses. Atoms only combine in small whole number ratios, such as 1 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and so on. And finally, atoms cannot be either created or destroyed, just like energy. In 1897, the British researcher J.J. Thompson published his work on the discovery of the electron using a cathode ray tube, which you can see here on this slide. He surmised that electrons must originate from inside the atom, and the atom had to be neutral. This led to the plum pudding model of the atom. In this model, mass and charge are uniformly distributed over the atom, and there is a cloud of positive charge and inside there are the negatively charged electrons which are essentially acting as plums, like in a plum pudding. Then his research student Ernest Rutherford came along in 1909. Of course we know Ernest Rutherford is from New Zealand. He's on our hundred dollar bill. And he so the boy from Mutuaka, Ernest Rutherford, discovered the nucleus through something called the gulf leaf scattering experiment of gold foil. This is also known as the gold foil experiment. What he did was that he shot alpha particles um, from a radium source inside this lead box through a hole, essentially so it became a gun, and he fired it into this gold foil here. And what he discovered was, in terms of these alpha particles, some went through, some changed direction, these ones here, oh sorry, here and here, and that was about 1 in 10,000 of these particles, and about 1 in 100,000 bounced straight back, or in front of the gold foil, which was unexpected. So from this, he discovered that atoms are mostly empty space, there is something very heavy in the centre of the atom, which we now call the nucleus. There is something positive in the centre, which we also call now call the nucleus. And the negatively charged electrons, instead of being lodged into this positive sphere of charge, as J.J. Thompson model suggested, they must orbit the dense positive mass in the centre in some way. Um, in terms of size of this nucleus compared to the atom, one can consider it to, say, the size of a fly in a cathedral. And we're going to learn more about this gold leaf experiment in a later lesson. So on the next video, we, on the next slide, we have a video which goes over what the gold leaf experiment actually did. In 1910, Rutherford and his co-workers were studying the angles at which alpha particles were scattered as they passed through a thin gold foil. Most of the alpha particles passed through undeflected. However, a few were found to be scattered at large angles, some even back in the direction from which they had come. This meant that they had collided with an object much more massive than the alpha particles themselves, yet so small that only a few alpha particles encountered them. This atomic level view shows what is happening. Most of the atom is occupied by the low mass electrons. The nucleus is small and massive. When an alpha particle encounters a nucleus, it is scattered at a large angle. 
Okay, so just reinforcing Rutherford's model of the atom here. So you have a dense nucleus with a positive charge and the negatively charged electrons orbit uh, this positive nucleus. And the positive charged nucleus is very small. It's about the size of a fly in a cathedral. So moving on to about 1913, about two years later, Niels Bohr, um, the famous Norwegian scientist who developed quantum theory, proposed a planetary model of the atom. So in his idea, we had a central nucleus and these electrons move around like planets in a solar system and each have their own orbit around the positive nucleus. Finally, in 1925, the German scientist Erwin Schrödinger, who you might be familiar with through Schrödinger's cat, proposed the Schrödinger equation. And this allowed the electrons in the atom to be analyzed quantum mechanically. Okay, so rather than being fixed in one place, they were in a probability cloud. So you couldn't actually tell where the electron was, but you had a probability of about 99.9% .9 it would be in a certain shell. This led to the current orbital model theory of the atom, which we still use today, and the quantum, or is also known as the quantum mechanic model or the electron cloud model. So you can see it here that the electrons, let's change the color of the pen, the electrons are like a diffuse cloud of negative charge around this positive nucleus here.